Well, I guess you don't see that every day. Unless you do. Welcome back to Building Resilience, a show about whole house solutions for extreme climate, healthy homes, and sustainability. This week, we're installing drywall inside a fancy little kitchen remodel. The framers have framed, the plumbers have piped, the electricians have run their wire, the HVAC has ducted, the drywall is up. This is a pivotal moment in the project where the room starts to take form. We got to, can see the massing and the volume of the space. Up here, you can see we've got a tray that's gonna be going around this room. And over here, we have this very cool arch that's gonna be coming in. But something else is happening here where each of these uh, sheets of drywall come together, we have an intersection, we have a connection, which means we have a bunch of decisions to make about what kind of material you, we wanna use at each of those connections and what might be going on behind the scene that we wanna mitigate. And that's where material choices come in. You know, 30 years ago, we didn't have a whole lot of solutions for drywall. We had, you know, outside corners were metal, uh, inside corners were paper. When paper faced metal came out, it was like mind blowing. It was pretty awesome. We're looking at a couple of solutions from Trimtex, um, and some of them look very similar to what we're used to. Like this one is an outside corner. It comes in a bunch of different profiles, very crisp, sharp one to a soft bull nose to a bigger bull nose, which is, which is a cool look. Um, but some of the advantages that these have over metal are that they, they don't rust. That's a big deal. They don't dent, and if you've been in this industry for a while, you know that dented metal is a real thing. There's also a lot less embodied energy uh, in one of these, which I think is a bonus. And they use a lot less mud than traditional trims, which uh, we'll get into a little bit later. So that's the outside corner. Of course, there's flexible outside corner, which is very, very cool, like when we're doing arches and niches and fun stuff like that. Um, their inside corner, though, this is kind of next level. Um, so traditional inside corner, you know, you flex it to get it to be the shape of your inside corner. Uh, so there I've got a nice 90 degrees, but you'll notice that one of the things that they've done here is they've got this raised edge lip. And that lip means that I can set my drywall knife right in there without fear of ripping the paper as I lay my bead. And my mud is gonna be the thickness of that lip, which is then gonna get painted. So I can have a really crisp, clean corner without worrying about ripping that paper tape. That's, that's a pretty cool solution. There's also a whole host of aesthetic solutions. This one is a tearaway L bead. Um, this is going to be used where I've got my, I want my drywall to terminate and either I've got another material adjacent or I want that, I want that to be a very clean, crisp, finished edge. And what's going to, I'm able to do here is mud right up. Again, there's that little ridge indicator. And then when I'm all done, this piece here, just peels away like that. One example of where this is a handy solution is where drywall abuts a shower unit. The tearaway L-bead protects the shower unit from drywall mud, which is applied flush with the reference nub. Once the drywall compound is applied, the tearaway strip can be removed. And I'm left with a very, very beautiful crisp edge. This one is called an F reveal bead. Um, and you can see it's got this shadow line here. And this might be used, for example, if I wanted to have a drywall termination with no baseboard, or I wanted maybe a reveal right before a baseboard. And so I'm in a mud this side of it, and then this will be my painted surface, and I'll get that nice shadow line in there. We're gonna put a shadow line above a recessed baseboard. So the drywall is held up enough to make room for that baseboard. The F channel is applied to the face of the drywall and finished in place with joint compound. When the walls are painted, the floor is installed, and the baseboard inserted, you're left with a sharp looking wall detail that'll wow your customers. The last category that I want to talk about is maybe the most exciting, which is their made for movement category. And there are a dozen products in there that do various things. The two that I'm going to take a look at today are their truss uplift and um, their flexible corner, which is I think called a magic corner. So this one is their truss uplift bead. So we're gonna attach this one so that this side is nailed off to the wall and this piece here is gonna be underneath our trusses. 
What we do when we install the drywall is we install the lid to this flange rather than to, to the truss itself. And the first screw is actually like 18 inches out in the field. And so what that means is I have a floating corner. So as the trusses move, if I've got big spans, um, this is going to keep that corner from cracking. And everybody hates warranty work, and that's one way that you make sure that your product stays looking good. Now this one is really cool. This is a flexible magic corner. You can see it's got that gasket that can move back and forth. So imagine you're doing a big vaulted ceiling. You've got that long uh, line near the ceiling where it gets flattens out a little bit, or at the knee wall, or just a funky corner in general where the roof load is meeting wall load and there's things moving around. This is a corner that's going to flex depending on it what kind of angle you've designed. It's not an excuse for bad framing, but this is a way to be more creative with your use of drywall. Let's get back to truss uplift for a second because it confuses a lot of people. Insulation in the attic means the bottom cord of a truss is warmer and moister than the rest of the truss. In winter, this causes the bottom cord to swell and because the ends are nailed in place, it can only swell upward. When drywall is fastened to the walls and ceilings, this seasonal movement leads to cracks. The truss backing angle that we're using aims to prevent cracks by accommodating this movement. The ceiling drywall is fastened into the backing angle at the edge and then into the truss about 18 inches back from the edge, where truss movement is less pronounced. When the truss bows upward in winter, the backer angle can flex, but the drywall stays put. To quote the great Dr. Joe, truss uplift isn't a problem if the client doesn't see it. For all those other parts of the room, we're going to use other TrimTex accessories. For inside corners, like where the ceiling and wall meet, both surfaces are treated with a spray adhesive. The adjustable vinyl corner bead is placed into the adhesive and adjusted to perfection. When the bead is where he wants it, Jose staples the end into the wall and ceiling and places the rest of the bead. He trims the ends at an angle to prevent overlap and staples another bead in place. The arch is done with the flexible corner bead that Michael showed us earlier. Because this arch dies flush into the wall, Jose trims the edge to a point and tests the fit. Looks like it's gonna work. He applies the adhesive and slips the flexible corner bead into place. When he's sure it's going to work, he goes ahead and staples it off. Now comes the good part. Mud. Jose feathers the inside corners and the outside corners into the existing wall and ceiling surfaces. Notice how little of the mud falls off the knife and onto the floor. I mean, I haven't seen any pigeon drops yet. Working his way around that tray ceiling, he gets back to the arch, where he smooths the compound over the surface and tidies up the edges for a perfect first coat.